Welcome to my YouTube channel and to my train room. A few weeks ago I made two videos on building freight car loads. I did a pulper load for a bulkhead flat and I did a coal load for a hopper car. Today I'm going to build a different kind of load for a different kind of car. Although I don't have a scrap yard on my layout yet, I plan to build one in the not too distant future. So today's project is for a load of scrap metal in a gondola. Let's get back to the workbench and I'll show you what I've been up to. I have here a basic Athern 50 foot gondola. I'm going to make a scrap load for it. And what better to use than my bucket of styrene scraps. I don't want to have to fill the whole car so I put a spacer in that's quarter inch balsa. I don't know whether I'm going to use that but for the time being it brings my deck up to an appropriate height. This is 60,000 styrene. Since all my scraps are styrene I figured that if I use a styrene base I can just use the uh, the solvent to attach it. But obviously I've got to make sure that I don't weld it permanently to the car. So I'm going to empty that out. I'm deliberately making it a loose fit because I want my load to be removable and I'm going to mask the inside of the car. Because the styrene cement will not stick the, the uh, masking tape. I could just use paper but masking tape will stay put more easily. By cutting the corners I can bend it over so it doesn't get in the way. Right, now let's put my base back in and let's see what I have in my bucket. All this big stuff is on top, it's the small stuff underneath that I really want. Of course, even the small stuff, most of it is too large to represent HO scale scrap. But all the small pieces like this, I can just throw straight in. Well, while the camera was off, I just continued tossing all the smallest bits of styrene I could, I could find into the gondola until the entire base was covered. And now what I need to do is get the styrene cement Hopefully I can do this without disturbing it too much. I wonder if I can just, just drop it on. I don't know if this eyedropper is going to work. It might be ruined completely. But they were less than $2 for a two pack at Walmart. So I think it's worth a try. I really don't know how much to put on. This is a complete experiment. And I really don't know if everything is glued, but I'm gonna leave it at that. And let it dry and see what happens. Well, I let the solvent set up. I came back to it the next day. And I think that segment should have been entitled how not to do it. I had a terrible job getting the load out of the car and I've broken all four corners. I can fix it, it's just a case of clamping it together and the spot of solvent. But the bottom of the car is thoroughly ruined. I'm not sure whether I'm ever going to be able to run this empty. I don't even know whether it's still going to run because it might have warped. I think the load is going to look all right once it's painted. Of course, as soon as I did it, I thought, ha, ah, I meant to insert a nail for lifting out with a magnet. I should have done that before I put the scrap in. So now I'm just gonna have to um, have the nail visible and hope that it looks like scrap. So anyway, let me attach a nail. Okay, the nail is not gonna be hard to insert. I've just drilled a small hole at an acute angle 
let me get some glue on the end of it. There, now that nail is near the top of the load without being obviously a full size nail. The head is just about visible. I'm happy with the way that's hidden in there. I've got to clean up the edges a little bit so it doesn't bind in the car and then I'm going to prime it black. So don't go away, I'll be right back. Well, I've sprayed the load with a black primer. I wanted to make sure that there was no white visible in any of the gaps. It actually took me two attempts because there was a few specs that I didn't get the first time around. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is paint it with metallic colors. I've got a couple of different shades of gray. I got some, um, some metallic gray and some brown oxide, which makes a good um, base color for the rust. And then once I've painted it, I'm going to weather it very heavily with rusting powders and, and stuff like that. So um, let me start painting. I confidently expect this to be the longest part of the process. So I guess I need to get going. I've gone over my load with all my various colors, with some different shades of gray and the brown oxide. I also added a little orange in places. Uh, all the colors were running together because I did each one before the previous one was dry. So that gives me a good overall base to work on. Now what I've got to do is dry brush, you know, highlights on it. I don't think I want any more of the base gray, but I want some metallic gray, some brown oxide, and some orange. Of course I don't have orange paint, I just mix it from red and yellow. Of course, unlike the last two loads I did, I don't have the advantage here of using the real thing. If you recall, with my pulpwood loads, I used real wood. My coal load, I was using real coal. Here I am representing scrap metal with styrene. The orange that I get from these two is a little bit bright for what I want. So I'm going to grab the rest of that brown oxide and put that in. Of course, most of my metallic grey has now been overpainted, so I'm going to do it one more time. Now for the final step, I'm going to use the rust powders. I need a sheet of paper to work on. three rust colors here. I'm going to start with the darkest one. And then go for the, the mid rust. lightest one on top but I'm going to use a smaller brush I'm not going to put as much of this on and there's my rusty scrap load Well, 
after that fiasco of the load being glowed firmly into the car, I figured there had to be a better way of doing it. So let's go back to the workbench and I'll show you what I came up with for the other loads. I've got two more loads set up to build here. I've got another one for a 50 foot gondola and one for a roundhouse 42 footer. What I've done this time is glued the quarter inch balsa to the bottom of the styrene with plier bond. And instead of putting the core in the car and trying to mask the car, I've just wrapped the tape around the core. I've also taken the opportunity to glue the nails to the center of the load before I start adding the scraps. Well, here we have these other two scrap loads finished. I varied the order of weathering on these slightly. I ended up with slightly different mix of colors, but that's okay, because maybe it's a different grade of scrap, I don't know. Anyway, one last thing I had to do is put some legs on this one because the sides of the shorter gondola are a little bit taller. So there we are. Now when I build my scrapyard I will have plenty of cars to serve it. Hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did and hope you remember to get it right first time, not the second time as I did. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you again next week. Bye for now.